uh, uh, the article that I, I'm, I'm putting in the description box gives the uh, ever dysfunctional feminist perspective in this case. It says, quote, I think that anything, this is a feminist responding uh, to the rape drug, uh, date rape drug detecting nail polish. She says, quote, I think that anything that can help reduce sexual violence from happening is, in some ways, a really good thing. Tracy Vitchers, the board chair for Students Active for Ending Rape, uh, the acronym is SAFER, how cute, uh, told Think Progress. But I think we need to think critically about why we keep placing the responsibility for preventing sexual assault on young women, end quote. Now, this may seem like generic feminist stupidity, now, I'm sure, and I'm sure that some, you know, MRAs that are green between the years and still actively engaging these feminists, thinking it's not a waste of time, uh, I'm sure upon reading this, uh, they were sent into a, you know, frothing convulsions of pure anger, uh, causing them to appeal to the public in hopes of using this as evidence against feminists. Uh, but, you know, the MRAs, uh, I think, are proceeding from the flawed premise that society supports and bolsters feminism because they, they don't know yet, they have not been educated yet, on the essential nature of feminists. That is, you know, hypocritical, sexist, and misandry. You see, society, on some level, already knows that feminists are hypocritical, sexist, and misandric. Feminists are no longer viewed by the general public as reasonable or innocently fighting for the rights of women without what appears to be a concerted effort to impede the rights of men. Feminists themselves are under something of a rebranding effort currently, the cornerstone of which includes the admission and ownership of the idea that feminism has, quote, become somewhat of an ugly word, end quote. And this cornerstone has been laid by the likes of the new fresh faces of feminism. Uh, we're talking about debutantes like Emma Watson, for example. Uh, gone, uh, at least to some degree, are the outdated combative posturing that the Steinems and the Germaine Greers built their feminist legacies on. Gone are the days of Andrea Dworkin. Gone are the days of shriveled, increasingly irrelevant firebrands that take these kind of pictures in the name of feminism. Gone is combative feminism, at least combative feminism on the surface, on the face. Today, instead, we have a new generation of young, uh, sometimes, oftentimes, neotenous looking women implementing things like, you know, the he for she campaign, which attempts to project an aura of, uh, I guess you could say, softness. And it also it also manages to play on men's gynocentric instincts, is purring to them that you know they they quote need men to help us fight sexism. We need men to join us in the struggle of feminism. It is still, however, nothing but a siren's call toward an island made of the sands of repackaged gynocentrism. It is the seemingly non-threatening inklings of the fourth wave of feminism, and all this can be placed on a spectrum of infinite iterations of gynocentrism. So this need for, you know, a softer, gentler, kinder feminism arose out of the fact that society already associates feminists with unreasonable man-hating, and even still, they will not act to stop them. They will not act to stop them, because to do so means they will be perceived as attacking women. And, you know, this, this dressing it up as a kinder, gentler uh, feminism is just the icing on the cake. It makes it even less likely for it to be challenged, but in, in the large sense, on the macro sense, feminism, even when it's perceived as being misandric and man-hating, still will not be challenged if the consequence is being perceived as attacking women. So the fear of this perception makes it a foregone conclusion that there will not be some kind of dramatic, logic-driven finishing blow done to feminism by the various social entities aligned against it. The atheists won't do it. The MRAs won't do it. Feminism will eventually simply extinguish itself. Its impenetrable scales of victimhood can only be properly digested by the acids in its own stomach. So the feminist Ouroboros, if you will, will have to consume itself tail first and only when it's good and ready. So in the meantime, uh, they play a numbers game. Technologies such as this nail polish could theoretically save some women from rape, but it would also endanger a woman's privilege to be able to randomly point their fingers at anyone they want in cases involving things like, you know, alcohol, and claim that they were raped when they wake up in the morning 
tinged with the unfortunate stench of regret following their far from non-consensual sexual encounters. The objections to this nail polish may seem irrational, but they follow a logical progression. That is, the feminist belief that it is okay for some women to be raped, right? This is collateral damage. It's okay for some women to be raped due to lack of this nail polish if the, you know, men are bad, women are good, social jihad they've declared on society is allowed, in the name of women, by the way, is allowed to continue. And frankly, most women are a-okay with this. Most men are too scared of being perceived as anti-women to form any reasonable backlash against it, and thus returning again to the words of Mr. Fuller, all we can really truly do to combat this, I'm afraid, is to develop new technologies that can protect men, legally speaking, even when these men are too afraid and ashamed of asking for protection in the current system in the first place. It is up to men who want to see some kind of change and some kind of cessation to the demonization of men and the exploitation of men to do it for them. I mean, I'm sorry, I hate to put it that way, but look, if we want to see some kind of change, women aren't going to do it, feminists aren't going to do it, society at large isn't going to do it. And, you know, then we have to ask ourselves as men if we're willing to do it. And that means inventing birth control, among many, many, many other things. That means employing technology in this war. And we're going to talk about that further in, in newer videos. But meanwhile, meanwhile, the current system, as, as you gentlemen know, is getting distinctly more anti-male by the day. Uh, I'm going to link a video in the description box from a post titled quote we need gender control not gun control wherein a dr will courtney describes several fallacious points regarding men and boys and gun violence and i'm just going to give a, a brief synopsis uh here so from zero to 39 seconds he starts by saying we need to seriously start thinking about some of the gendered messages we give our kids and not just kids alone also men and he then talks about how the gendered messages the media sends to men and boys encourage men and boys to be violent and that men and boys learn that violence is an effective way to get what they want via this mechanism. Now from two minutes uh, onward, approximately two minutes onward, he then says, quote, We know that boys spend four times as much time playing video games as girls do, and those are the messages that they're getting when they watch and play these video games. We also know from some very sophisticated research now that boys who play those video games, particularly interactive video games, that these boys are more likely to engage in risky and dangerous behavior. Further down in the article, he says, we know from national data that boys are more likely to go without needed mental health treatment. That is a fact. And that's the fact that we really need to address as a country if we're going to try and stop the kinds of violence that we're seeing boys perpetuate. Even further down in the article, he says, quote, We really have to look at gender. All of the talk invariably turns to gun control and stricter gun control laws, and that's an important discussion to have, but we are not asking the most important question, which is, why is it that men and boys kill with guns? And you know, any effective answer to the problem of gun violence needs to begin with the question about gender, about boys and men, otherwise we're never going to figure out why it is that boys and men kill. So, uh, let's see, where do we begin with this? Uh, we're going to start with, uh, you know, wider society's favorite scapegoats, the part that he mentioned about the diabolical media and its equally pervasive cousin, the video game industry. So, over and over, uh, we hear this fear-mongering threat narrative of video games corrupting our innocent youth, and over and over again, it is shown to be categorically untrue. Now, this post uh, that I found titled, Study Finds No Evidence Violent Video Games Make Children Aggressive, is only the most recent offering of study after study showing that violent video games do not translate to violent children including, of course, in regard to the boys that overwhelmingly play them. Now, the article states, quote, Playing violent video games is no more likely to be damaging to young children's behavior than those considered harmless, an Oxford University study suggests. Research involving British primary school children found that the length of time young people spend playing games, rather than their content, 
could have an effect on their behavior or school performance, and even then only slightly so. But it concluded that fears that a generation of young people are growing up with their development impaired by exposure to violent video games are no more likely to be borne out than previous, quote, moral panics over television and other media, end quote. So, despite, uh, you know, uptight moral outrage evangelists on every side of the political spectrum, a foray into the world of Doom or Call of Duty or Halo, uh, etc., will definitively not result in some apocalyptic army of testosterone crazed adolescents going on shooting sprees. Life unfolds every day with a statistically trivial amount of these mass shootings happening in real life, despite a daily online virtual mass first person shooter slaughter taking place every day that would make the invasion of Normandy seem like a walk in the park by comparison. Video games categorically do not cause increased violence, and frankly, I'd love to see these supposed sophisticated studies that Courtney claims to show otherwise. Now, as to the part where he says, we know from national data that boys are more likely to go without needed mental health treatment, this is likely partially true. It frankly wouldn't surprise me at all to learn that boys are in fact more likely to go without mental health treatment, and yes, we do need to talk about it, there's no argument from me there, but I suspect, however, that talking about these issues with the likes of Courtney and, you know, these band of women in the video that seem to just be gobbling up his misandra statements would devolve fairly quickly into a pathologizing of everything male. I wonder if Courtney would ever work up the nerve to tell these same women about how women are more likely than men to kill their young children. Perhaps a powwow about the problem of female violence is needing now. Hmm? But that, you know, that won't sell his book. So there you have it. So I stumbled recently on an article titled, quote, When a man asks for help, he's considered a less competent leader, study says. It says, quote, No man is an island, entire to himself, but he'd better act like one anyway if he wants to be considered a leader, new research says. A team of scholars led by Professor Ashley Shelby Rosette of Duke University's Fuqua School, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Fuqua School of Business performed two experiments to reach that conclusion. Their ultimate takeaway? Of course men have to ask for help when they lead, but they'd better be careful about it. First, they gave questionnaires to 144 lucky business school students who participated in, quote, leadership ventures that included ski sledding in Antarctica, climbing a volcano in Ecuador, and taking a safari across the plains of Africa. Each group had a leader of the day every day. Half the questionnaires asked about how competent those daily leaders were. The others asked how much they asked for help. The results show that male leaders who asked for help were considered less competent than ones who didn't, but female leaders who asked for help suffered no such loss of respect. So then, gentlemen, is it any wonder why men reach out less in regards to securing help in combating mental illness? You won't hear about any of this from Courtney, because unfortunately in our society it's much easier to blame irrelevant intangible factors like video games or the media or whatever the current en vogue moral panic is instead of asking the uncomfortable question and that question is do we as a society expect men to withstand much more pressure than women before they can then ask for help and not be viewed as some kind of failure right if we subjected women to the same pressures as men would you not see an increase in female violence when more women more of these women inevitably crack under the pressure. So again, uh, Courtney said this. He said, we really have to look at gender. All of the talk invariably, he's talking about gun control here, all of the talk invariably turns to gun control and stricter gun control laws, and that's an important discussion to have, but we are not asking the most important question, which is why is it that men and boys kill with guns, and any effective answer to the problem of gun violence needs to begin with the question about gender, about boys and men. Otherwise, we're never going to figure out why it is that boys and men kill. So, we see here then uh, the proposed solution. Punish those penis-having, violence-prone monsters by selectively infringing on their Second Amendment rights and theirs only. Now, uh, you know this, this video isn't intended to tell you what you think about gun control, right? Because we could spend hours and hours and hours in the comments section debating something like that. It's usually a waste of time and it just goes in circles. 
But, but this video does intend to highlight how gun control is historically and has often been used in targeted ways to demonize certain demographics as well as to disenfranchise them. Uh, in this case, it's men and boys. It's, it's really amazing, I think, how uh, Courtney starts off this discussion by talking about the negative messages our society sends to men and boys while he ends the discussion by implying that we need to be extra careful about the male sex having access to firearms. Now, what type of message does that send to boys? Because it sounds a lot to me like what you're telling them, what you're telling boys, is that they are more likely to be killers by virtue of their genitals alone. And, you know, of course, that won't leave a lasting impression on boys, right? The truth is that no matter what...